Shrouded in mystery and lost to history, the Tasmanian tiger, or thylacine, was the largest known carnivorous marsupial of modern times. Once roaming freely across Tasmania and mainland Australia, this enigmatic creature's tale is a somber echo of human impact on wildlife. Declared extinct in 1936 with the death of the last captive individual, the thylacine has since become a symbol of extinction. But what if it's still out there? Today, we explore the enduring mystery of the Tasmanian tiger, the efforts to find it, and the ambitious plans to bring it back from the brink. From ancient Aboriginal rock art depicting its distinctive stripes, to the tragic tales of its decline due to excessive hunting and habitat destruction, the story of the thylacine is not just about a lost species. It's about our ongoing struggle with nature and our attempts to mend the irreparable. As the top predator, the thylacine was an integral part of Tasmania's ecosystem. Misunderstood and maligned, the Tasmanian tiger was hunted to extinction, its loss a poignant reminder of the delicate balance of our natural world. As a species, the modern thylacine made its appearance in the fossil record around 4 million years ago. Before the thylacine became a target for European settlers, it held a significant place in Aboriginal culture, as evidenced by ancient rock paintings. These artworks, some dating back over 3,000 years, illustrate the reverence and ecological significance attributed to the thylacine, suggesting it was both respected and possibly feared as a powerful element of the natural world. The thylacine was notable for its unique appearance. It had a lean, dog-like body with a stiff, kangaroo-like tail, giving it an unusual hybrid profile. Distinctive dark stripes across its lower back and tail contributed to its tiger nickname. The thylacine's head was large with an elongated, pronounced, wolf-like snout. It was a solitary hunter and diet-wise, the thylacine was primarily carnivorous, feeding on small animals such as birds, kangaroos, and wallabies. It is thought to have been nocturnal or crepuscular, hunting mainly at night or during twilight, utilizing stealth and a strong sense of smell to stalk and ambush prey. Originally, the thylacine were living abundantly in mainland Australia, as they were the most successful predator in their ecological niche. However, as thylacine were solitary hunters, after the introduction of dingoes to the area, which found more success as pack hunters, they were quickly outcompeted for resources becoming extinct in the mainland more than 2,000 years ago. In the 1800s, European settlers arrived in Tasmania, bringing with them sheep and a new landscape of agriculture that would clash dramatically with the native wildlife. Among those caught in this clash was the Tasmanian tiger, known scientifically as Thylacinus cynocephalus, a unique predator that had thrived in isolation on the island for millennia. Fear and misunderstanding fueled the conflict between humans and thylacines, by the early 20th century, thylacine were wrongly blamed for widespread livestock losses. This fear led to devastating consequences for the species. The thylacine were demonized. People claimed that the thylacine, when it killed its prey, that it would suck the blood from it. And efforts to eliminate them were rewarded. In 1888, the Tasmanian government officially sanctioned their extermination by introducing a bounty system paying one euro per adult thylacine killed and 10 shillings for each pup. This policy catalyzed a tragic reduction in their numbers, with over 2,000 bounties collected by 1909. This campaign against the thylacine was relentless. The last known survivor spent his final days in Hobart Zoo, dying of exposure in 1936, a mere two months after the species was granted legal protection. The extinction of the thylacine stands as a stark example of human impact on species survival. It highlights not only the direct actions that led to its disappearance, but also the broader environmental changes that facilitated its decline. The thylacine's influence extends far beyond its physical existence, captivating the imagination of people around the world. Despite its extinction, the legend of the Tasmanian tiger lives on, fueled by periodic reports of sightings and a deep-seated hope that the species persists in the wild. I stood there and held the torch on it for 40 seconds, I reckon. The regulars put down their Tassie tiger beer long enough to tell you they've seen the animal. It was this a mighty howl like this. Arrgh. You can't help notice, no one ever quite captures a clear image. Still, reported sightings come by the thousands. In Tasmania and beyond, the thylacine has become a cultural icon, 
a symbol of what is lost and what might still be out there. Its story resonates, not just with cryptozoologists and enthusiasts, but also with the general public, reflecting our broader concerns about wildlife conservation and extinction. Scientifically, the thylacine continues to be a subject of intense study. Researchers like those from the University of Tasmania and other institutions have been analyzing historical and recent sighting reports. Their work involves statistical models that suggest the thylacine could have survived beyond its known extinction date, sparking further interest and investigation. Moreover, advancements in genetics have opened new doors. Teams like those led by Professor Andrew Pask at the University of Melbourne have sequenced most of the thylacine genome, aiming to understand its biology deeply and, possibly, to bring it back through de-extinction technologies. We can't magically bring the Tasmanian tiger back. We have to start with a living cell, find the closest living relative to your animal that has gone extinct. And for us, that is a small marsupial species called the fat-tailed dunnart. And turn it into a much larger Tassie tiger. To turn your fat-tailed dunnart genome or cell into a thylacine cell. This scientific journey isn't just about the thylacine. It's about pushing the boundaries of what we know about genetics, conservation, and the limits of science. Each study, each purported sighting, adds layers to our understanding of how species interact with their environments and how human actions can drive them to extinction or bring them back. Despite its official classification as extinct, the legend of the thylacine continues to thrive, fueled by ongoing searches and reported sightings across Tasmania and mainland Australia. Recent years have seen a resurgence in efforts to find the thylacine, driven by both amateur enthusiasts and seasoned scientists. Notably, Individuals like Forrest Galante, who has been at the forefront of these modern expeditions, remain optimistic about the possibility of rediscovering the species. And I still think that in Papua New Guinea, they, there could be an extant population. Because it's such a dramatic habitat that dingoes just probably couldn't traverse, that the thylacine, because it had evolved there, could still be thriving with, without the competition. Galante's search combines cutting-edge technology with traditional tracking methods, hoping to capture definitive proof of the thylacine's continued existence. On May 14, 2024, Galanti uploaded a video to his YouTube channel, interviewing a man who allegedly stumbled upon a thylacine during a vacation in which he captured photographic evidence of this chance encounter. During the interview, Galanti expressed skepticism and wanted to release this footage to the world to crowdsource an effort to determine whether or not the footage was genuine. This video immediately sparked a debate and controversy, with many claiming the footage was absolute proof of the thylacine's current existence, while others expressed doubt. Galanti's video caught the attention of another YouTuber, The Gaming Beaver, who investigated the purported photographic evidence and expertly dismantled any credibility to the claim that the photos and the chance encounter were genuine, releasing three videos over the span of a couple weeks. Galanti later responded on June 7th, thanking the internet and specifically mentioning The Gaming Beaver for their contributions to debunking these photographs and the story they came with. Galanti also mentioned that while sadly these were proven to be fakes, it is fantastic to see the thylacine getting such much-deserved, wide-reaching attention. While there were revelations that these photographs were indeed faked, reports of sightings have not been limited to mere anecdotes. A detailed statistical analysis conducted by the University of Tasmania suggests that some of these sightings could hold merit, pointing to possible, though unconfirmed, survival in remote areas. Experts like Nick Mooney, a renowned wildlife biologist, have critically evaluated such evidence. So that's a, like a huge search was carried out and nobody found it. Something I often do is reconstruct reports. People's ability to um, modify their memory is notorious. The thing that uh, worried us a lot was the remarkable similarity with this photo. Often debunking it, but sometimes admitting the plausibility of a few cases. For instance, a highly publicized 2021 sighting turned out to be a patamelon yet it sparked global interest and debate. This constant flux of hope and disappointment has not deterred the efforts. The scientific community, along with passionate laypeople, continues to search, driven by a blend of scientific curiosity and a deeper, almost mythical allure of the Tasmanian tiger. As the search for the thylacine in the wild continues, another frontier is opening in the realm of science, de-extinction. Spearheaded by innovators in genetic technology, the quest to bring back the Tasmanian tiger from extinction is more than a sci-fi fantasy. 
it's becoming a scientific possibility. Colossal Biosciences, a company co-founded by Harvard geneticist George Church and tech entrepreneur Ben Lamb, announced in 2021 their plan to resurrect the thylacine. Their approach involves sophisticated genetic engineering techniques, aiming to recreate the thylacine's DNA and reintroduce it into a modern ecosystem. The process begins with extracting and sequencing DNA from well-preserved thylacine specimens. By comparing this genetic material with that of closely related species, scientists can identify the genes necessary for thylacine characteristics. Using CRISPR, a revolutionary gene editing tool, researchers plan to splice the thylacine-specific genes into the genome of a related marsupial. Yet, this ambitious project is not without controversy. Ethical debates swirl around the implications of bringing back an extinct species. Conservationists argue the resources and technologies being directed towards de-extinction could instead enhance efforts to protect the myriad of species currently at risk of extinction. The focus, they suggest, should be on preserving the habitats and lives of existing species, rather than resurrecting those we've lost the DNA of this mouth-sized animal into making this apex predator of Australia. Yeah. It stretches imagination. Helgen is the skeptic, gently explaining that wishing Tassie tigers were running rampant doesn't overcome science. If we could just get this animal back, maybe it would help us think different about extinction or the guilt that we might feel. On the other hand, Proponents of de-extinction advocate for its potential benefits. They argue that the technologies developed through these efforts could also aid in the conservation of living species, offering new tools for genetic diversity and resilience. Ethically, the debate is complex. While the science of bringing back the thylacine is fascinating, it raises concerns about animal welfare, the ecological impacts of reintroducing a species, and the potential unforeseen consequences of altering natural processes. As we've journeyed through the shadowy forests of history and the bright possibilities of science, the story of the Tasmanian tiger stands as a poignant reminder of the fragile bonds between humans and the natural world. The thylacine's tale teaches us the harsh consequences of environmental neglect and the hopeful prospects of redemption through innovative conservation strategies. This story is not just about a single species. It's about our entire ecosystem and our role within it. Let us take inspiration from the efforts to understand and possibly revive the thylacine. Let this not just be a quest for one lost animal, but a catalyst for broader change, promoting a future where we live in harmony with our planet. Every story of extinction is a lesson engraved in time, urging us not to repeat the mistakes of the past. As stewards of this earth, it's up to us to listen, learn, and act. Together, let's write a different ending for our wildlife. An ending where we not only revive lost legends like the thylacine, but also safeguard the legacy of all species threatened by extinction. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more, and as always, stay curious.